Hey friends, as you might have noticed, the old LTX video workflow at my page has quit working. There is a new version of LTX video around, and there are now three nodes deprecated. It doesn't help to go into the manager. Custom nodes, gone, nothing. This here is the past, so we need to redo the workflow to the new version 0.95. This is AI, you turn around and everything changes. But it is well worth the change. Version 0.95 is a big improvement. It brings quite a few new tricks. So let's redo the workflow with the new nodes. First things first, my hardware is a 4060 XT with a 5800X3D and 32GB system RAM. You need minimum 12GB VRAM for this workflow. Well, it might work with 8GB, but I wouldn't recommend it. Back to the workflow. We talk about two workflows now as a replacement for this workflow here. This simple method here with one initial image. And then we have this um, more complex method where you have a first image, an intermediate image and a last image. As you can see, I have turned off the intermediate image and the last image here with the past fast groups bypasser. And then you have basically the same functionality than in this workflow here. This workflow here is easier to understand though, simpler, just one image slot. Let's start with the easy one. Um, I have as usually arranged um, everything together in groups, the loaders, the prompt, this belongs together here. Florence and prompt. Then we have the image, the settings, the case sampler and the final video. That way you have some logical blocks that belongs together and yeah, it is easier to work with. The first group is the loaders. This is here the LTX video safe tensor. Here in the node you can see Oh, come on, where you can get it and where you need to place it. Same for the clip vision here. This one here is basically the same as from Flux. It deals with the prompt and text encoding. The initial image, here you can load, as told, the initial image. Um, let's have a closer look at the resize node. I have connected the image with the get image size, means these values here are not valid at the moment. You can type in what you want. We will work with the image size that we feed in here. When you want to work with these values here, disconnect it. And what you can also do is to keep proportions, then you just need to adjust the width and the height gets adjusted because it keeps the proportion. Let's connect this back. As told, I want to work with the original image size. The prompt. Um, I have as usual here the Florence image to text group. Um, Florence analyzes the initial image and writes a prompt for you. Let me have a look here and show it. And in a short moment, you will see here this text here. Without the Florence group, we need to write it by ourselves. And that's a lot of work. I am a lazy guy. I want to drop the image and start the workflow. When you want uh, to work with just the prompt here, just with this one, then you can turn off the convert info to widget, this one back to text, and then you can completely remove this group here and work with text encode only. Write your prompt by yourself. I told I'm lazy. I don't want this. Let's turn it back. Widget to input, text to widget, and connect output one with text again. Closer look here again. Um, this is the model. This is the model loader. And here is the core of Lawrence. Leave it as it is. And this thing here replaces everything as, that is image in the prompt with the word video and. This gives a prompt here now for LTX. 
that LTX knows it is about a video and not about an image. And then we have here the advice from the first, uh, from the 0 0.9, um, to have some suffixes. I have this still in the workflow and I want to give some advices. This is the only part that I adjust by myself. I want to have bubbles in the beer glass, a talking cat and a moving camera. And well, yeah, the bubbles in the glass still doesn't arrive, but the cat is talking and the camera has a slight movement, not in this example, but usually it has. That's better. Slight camera movement, as you can see here, but now the talking is gone and still no beer bubbles. It is as it was. Try around with different seeds and have a look. I just want to mention this prompt here is in top on front of everything else. Then comes the captured image to text. Don't know why this is missing again here. Um, then comes this text and then comes this one here. This is appended and this is prepended in front of order matters. And then we already arrive at the LTX settings. This preprocess um, module here adds some noise to the original image internally. And this noise enables um, LTX video to do the animation. A lower value, um, maybe try one and you will see that the motion becomes worse. And try 100 and you will see the same. The sweet spot here is between 20 and 40. This node here is the core of LTX image to video. And here you can adjust the length of the video and how much edge you need. Usually one. Um, the length, um, it is always plus one. So six, 96 frames, uh, four seconds, 24 frames. Funny enough, we have a frame rate of 25, but the example still works with 24 plus one, 96 plus one. Here you adjust the frame rate, um, 25 as told. This is um, how LTX works internally with 25 frames. Um, leave it as it is. It is okay. Also here, the frame rate, 25 frames. When you make this value lower, then you um, introduce a slow motion effect. When you make it higher, then the video runs too fast. Well, you can put it to 50 and make a frame interpolation afterwards. But as told, 25 frames is okay. The LTX scheduler um, is part of the case sampler and of the LTX settings because here you adjust the steps and steps is normally a, something for the case sampler. I am honest, I have no idea what these values are good for. Not at the moment. I would need to toy around. At the moment it is not documented. Leave it as it is. So we have already arrived at the case sampler. As told, this workflow is not this complex. It is the usual stuff. Here you can set up the sampler name, uh, the sampler. And here you adjust the seed and the config value. Between three and six is a good value. Three is fine, as you can see here in the result. And this is why I love LTX version 0 0.95. Um, in the former version, this animation would have been completely blurry. This is a really great result here. I love it. And one word to the video combined node here. When you want higher quality in, in the output, you can set this value here, for example, to 11 or 12. Gives um, better quality. Now let's talk about the second workflow. You will see lots of things that you know already from this workflow here. We have the Florence image to text, we have the loader, we have the prompt, and we have the case sampler and final video. What is different is that we have these images here with an add guide connected. And this LTX video add guide node here and, uh, makes it possible that you can change 
the images together. Let's pull it out just for a moment. Let's pull the images out and you can see this here is in a chain. You could also add a fourth image here in between. It would still work. The settings here. Um, I have in the first workflow the resize image node in the initial image node group. This I have uh, separated it here so that I can have the images here in chain. So here you can resize the image the same as in the formal workflow. I grab the size from the first image. Just drag it out, get image size. When you don't want this, disconnect it. When you want to work with the values that you can use here, disconnect it. Also here we have the image compression to give some movement to the image. And the add guide here, here you can set the keyframes. Frame index zero means this is the initial image. Here you can set a value of the keyframe that you want. We have a length of 97 frames, so you can choose any value in between 0 and 97. And this minus 1 here means this is the end image. The rest is as shown in the former workflow. We have here the frame rate. We can adjust the steps. In the case sampler we have the same things. What we have here additionality here is the crop guides. This is uh, to enable the add guide functionality. So this is needed in the chain. But besides that, it is the same workflow. You can work with both workflows when you just need the initial image. As told, I have shown it before. This is the intermediate and last image off. And then you can also work here with the initial image. The choice is yours. Just to have a closer look at what we have produced here, we have the initial image, a cat looking to the left. And then we have a face in the middle from frame 48. And then at the final frame, the cat is looking at the right. And this is what we are having here. Well, the morphing isn't really perfect. Um, this image doesn't really fit into the chain. But all in all, impressing result. Let's for a short moment turn off the intermediate image and generate it. Hmm, this is not the second time that it doesn't want to finish. It hangs here in the VAE decode. Seems that I'm out of RAM here. Let's try a smaller size. Means we disconnect get image size and this should be fine. Proportions, and let's do a second run. Drum roll. Let's have a look. Should normally work in an eye blink, the VAED code. And here we go. And look at this result here. That's nice, isn't it? start and end frame. Now, one last word to the arrangement here. Usually I make sure that everything is in a chain, that everything is in the order of how it is made. Oh, comfy. Here we go. This means we have here the loader and the loading images and so on. But when you do this, and here comes the prompt, you start already to see the problem that you start to move and scroll around like crazy and you don't get your job done. So this would be the order and then you would need to go from left to right and forward and backwards. So I always make sure that I have it as compact as possible to have everything in few. And this is the case here. I can scroll in. I don't need to scroll a lot around. I can type in the prompt. I can drag in the images without to move everything around. 
Well, that basically was it. In case you have any further questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section. Have fun with this workflow.